what's up you guys welcome back to the channel now as many of you guys know I have been on a little bit of a tear of trying to wrap things up in 2018 and this is one of those videos that I desperately need to get done before the end of the year because it means I wouldn't be able to throw any of this stuff out until I did a video on it so as you guys can probably already tell by the title and the thumbnail and all of that these are going to be my beauty slash skincare empties of 2018 I'm gonna be honest this isn't have been for the entire year Year. However, ever since I started doing like my really intensive, you know, I don't want to die alone skincare regimen, I figured that I would go ahead and keep track of all the things that I liked, the things that didn't quite work for me, the things that got me sexually aroused and I had to purchase SAP, and all of the things that I'm going to be leaving in 2018. Okay, so I figured that I would go ahead and cover this in the same order that I would naturally use them in my skincare routine, aka cleansers first, then into hydrating toners, treatments, so on and so forth, yada yada yada, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So without ado, let's go ahead and start things off with the cleansers I've used up. So, starting things off, we have the Hamish All Clean Balm. Now, you guys have seen this in a couple of previous videos, and I absolutely freaking love this. This is great for removing any makeup that you might be wearing, or in some cases, some really, really like persistent SPFs. I don't know if you've ever used some that you like put on your face and you're like, wash your face off, and you're like, I can still kind of feel you there. This is absolutely fantastic for that. Um, now, currently, I am using a cleansing oil that's in a pump, and the big reason that I went ahead and tried that is because I kind of felt that this was a little bit fiddly to have on my counter it is something that you have to pop open you have to scoop it out and smear it all over your face I actually didn't mind the whole like smearing all over your face thing but you know that's a whole nother conversation we can have on a different channel or maybe this one um, but yeah I wanted to try out something a little bit different um, a little bit more convenient when it's like dosed out but to be honest with you, I actually still kind of prefer this better. So I might try out a couple other like makeup removing cleansers first, but most likely I'm gonna be purchasing this one again. Um, the next one that I really, really enjoyed, and you'll you'll definitely recognize this from the previous I don't wanna die alone skincare routine video, but this is actually the Depotted CeraVe um, hydrating, moisturizing cleanser thing. Listen, I don't know the name because it's not on here but I'll put up a picture of it somewhere um, this thing is just super duper gentle really fantastic for the skin leaves the skin actually feeling better than it was before you cleansed it and let's be real when you use like second step cleansers aka the cleanser that's actually doing a good amount of the job to just like cleanse off your skin they usually tend to feel like they're stripping your skin. This doesn't feel like it's stripping your skin at all. It actually feels like it's washing away the bad stuff and keeping your your skin like nice and comfortably clean. Um, and even kind of depositing some good stuff in there. My, my skin almost feels a little bit calmer after using this, so this is definitely a big win for me. You can see that it's not finished, but literally I poured like one bottle in here and then I poured another bottle in here because, you know, I'm fancy and I wanted it to be full. Um, but this is definitely something that I'm going to continuously refill, so technically I can never have an empty on it, but I kind of do. Moving along to one of my favorite categories, we have the hydrating toners. And we're gonna start things off kind of in suit with a starting treatment essence. This one is by Secret Key, and this is the Rose Edition or the rose gold edition. I don't know, I like to add gold at the end of things to make them sound fancier, but regardless, this was actually what kind of started out, as the name would suggest, my obsession, well not obsession, but my reliance on starting treatment essences, because I actually went ahead and picked this one up first, mainly because of the fact that it was a little bit more affordable than the Nisha's Time Revolution one that I'm currently using, and I really didn't know exactly what it was gonna do, but, like I've stated before, I kind of go ahead and pat this in my hands and it feels thinner than water. Then once you apply it to the face and kind of pat it in, your face feels really, really soft, but also like prepped for other products. And that's what I absolutely loved about this one. This is one that I will consider repurchasing. Um, I'm trying out different starting treatment essences first. Like you guys know, I'm using the Nisha's Time Revolution, but I actually went ahead and ordered um, another one from Secret Key, which I believe is their 24 karat gold version. And I'm like, okay, listen. I want to put gold at the end of you, but I'm going to go ahead and put gold on my face next time around. So I'm waiting for that shipment to come in, and I'm very, very excited about it. I hope that it works just as good as um, the one that I'm currently using, as well as the uh, Rose Edition. But 
staying in tune with all of the Secret Key uh, hydrating toners, I do have to say that they make a good set. This one, however, was not my favorite, as you guys saw in a recent video. Um, I have the rose, and I do have the milk finished up there as well, but this is the Rose Floral Softening Toner by Secret Key. I just... I just didn't feel like it did enough for me. They said that it's softening and healing towards the skin, but one of its big features is it smells like rose. I'm like... To be honest with you, I don't really care that much that you smell like rose. I just want you to do a good job. And as compared to some of the other things that I put on my skin, um, legitimately, I just I felt like this was good at hydrating. And of course, it's very, very affordable. So that's fantastic there. But I didn't feel like it did anything in addition. They said that it healed the skin, but I don't really feel any healing going on. That's just me. Um, the other one that I did actually quite enjoy was the Milk Brightening Toner. Now this one actually has some lactic acid in it, or what they call AHA, but of course milk has lactic acid and it's an AHA. So it's really, really good for a um, very mild exfoliation to the skin. It's not something that you can feel. You don't get any tingles off of it, but um, you use it enough and it'll slough off some of the dead skin cells. It also says that it has some of the um, growth factors in there to kind of help your skin rejuvenate itself um, and it was very milky and white and you guys know that I'm a big fan of milky white stuff um, that just just splash all over your face so this one I'm definitely definitely loving um, I will end up repurchasing this one if the next toner that I'm picking up to replace it is not as good I'm getting like a rice toner um, which We'll have to see. I hear that rice water toners are very, very good for like brightening the skin too, but this is definitely on my like, I'm gonna be watching for you and I might have to get another round. Um, now, the other toner that I really um, enjoyed and I finished up, you guys have seen this in the other video, is the Pyongnam Yol Essence Toner. This one is another fermented toner, just kind of like the starting treatments. Um, the fermented ingredients tend to be much finer in their molecular structure, so they absorb really, really well into the skin. That's kind of like why I feel like they can almost feel thinner than water, or at least the starting treatments do. This one's actually a little bit more viscous and a little bit thicker, but it's weird. You think it's thick, so you don't think it's gonna go in, but trust me, it goes in. You actually go ahead and apply this on your hands, just like all of the other toners. You splash it on your face and you're like, it's thick. It's gonna sit on top of the skin. It's not gonna do anything, but no. I've applied this on its own a couple times and literally I'll pat it in and I'm like, it's thick. And then all of a sudden you like go back and you're like, oh, it's, it's completely sank into my skin. That's kind of freaking amazing. So this one is actually a very, very simple toner. I believe that they keep the ingredients very low on this. It's supposed to be nice and soothing and help anti-aging. So I am all about that. Uh, I've actually already repurchased and it is currently in my bathroom right now. Moving along, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to our treatment category. Now, unfortunately, we are gonna start things off with a little bit of a dud. I feel like this product promised me the sun, the moon, the stars, and did not really deliver me very much at all except for a uh, negative $30 in my bank account. So this is actually a big fan favorite, which is called Claire's The Midnight Youth Activating Drops. So this has been a fan favorite for so many people, so many people that I trust and that I love. And I was just like putting it on my face and I actually made it one of the first things that touched my face, AKA, you know, when you layer up product because I wanted all the benefits. Let me read it to you in fact. The highly concentrated midnight blue youth activating drop encourages collagen production and accelerates the skin's renewal process, meaning improved skin texture and elasticity and a lessened appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. I mean, I don't look like I'm 12 now, do I? My skin looks good, but my skin looks good from all of the other products that I've been using on it too. I do not feel like, you know, my skin's texture has changed all that much. I don't feel like my fine lines and wrinkles have really gone away. And I was using this twice a day. This thing is freaking tiny. This is 20 ml. This is like a little bit more than half an ounce. So for me to use this twice a day, and go through an entire bottle and not see any like big meaningful changes, not even big meaningful changes, just meaningful changes, I'm kind of like, 
Ugh. I do like to give products a second chance and because of the fact that this is such a fan favorite Maybe we'll go ahead and repurchase it at some point just to see if it does end up changing anything The only thing that I can say that I did see with this is as many of you guys know I have sensitive skin I do have a bit of rosacea and this seemed to kind of calm some of that down um, but it it's not drastic enough for me to really want to spend another 30 bucks on a product that did not absolutely kill it for me. Now, moving along to another product that I'm still unsure about. This is a much more affordable product. This is from The Ordinary. In fact, the next few products you're going to be seeing are from The Ordinary. This is the Argeroline Solution in 10%. This, a lot of, okay, this is pumped up by the fan base. This is literally everybody calls Botox in a bottle. It's supposed to like get rid of your expression lines and soften them and all that kind of stuff. And it did. It softened up a couple of my lines around my mouth. However, what I was really looking for were my forehead lines and some of the lines underneath my eyes. I've used up one bottle. I'm halfway through a second bottle and I don't really feel like it's been crazy, crazy dramatic. Um, but it did do work on the lines around my mouth, so for me, I'm just kind of like holding out hope. It's as if like I've been working out and I've kind of plateaued for a little bit, so I have to kind of just keep working at it to break through to the next portion where like literally I just Benjamin buttoned and I look like, you know, Tom Holland. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. Um, but for, for now, I might actually go ahead and like repurchase one more bottle. So keep in mind, this is bottle one. I'm halfway through a second bottle. I'm going to give it one more shot to see if it really feels like it's all that great. And then maybe I'll go off of it for a little while just to see if anything has changed. Now, the next item I cannot live without. This is a must-have. This is the Ordinary's Granactive Retinoid 5%. Now, as you guys know, retinol is something that does uh, skin cell turnover. Basically... At least from everything that everybody has said about retinol, it fools your skin into saying, hey, listen, stop being old, be young again. And if only I could just say that to my skin on a daily basis, cheer my skin on in that way and have it do it without a chemical, that's fantastic. But this one is actually um, kind of doing a pretty good job of it. It's very, very hydrating because I believe that this is in squalene and squalene is a natural moisturizer. Um, now. The thing that you need to notice is this is a granactive retinoid. It's not a retinol. It's actually a, as the ordinary kind of describes it, it's a different version of a retinol that's more gentle but will still get you the results. And I've been happy with it so far. I like, listen, everybody says that you need to have a retinol in your um, anti-aging regime. And I think that this is definitely one that suits me really well. There's another one in 2% if you, uh, do tend to get very very sensitive, but like I said, I have rosacea and it doesn't piss off my rosacea So this I think is absolutely fantastic. Now the next item that I'm gonna talk about I actually It's one of those things that I don't know if I need But I kind of like having it because I think it does something This is the absorbic acid 8% and the alpha arbutin 2% so this is for um, fading any kind of like acne scars, really evening out your skin tone. This is basically vitamin C. You know how everybody has a vitamin C serum? This is basically a vitamin C serum. And I'm gonna be honest with you, the one thing that I do like about this is if I do get a pimple, um, I tend to have like a pimple for like a day and then it goes away. But the one thing that doesn't happen is it does not leave any of those like dark marks on your face. Like I don't get any hyperpigmentation for that. Or if I do, the hyperpigmentation goes away really, really quickly. Again, I don't get like crazy breakouts or anything. I'll have like an occasional pimple like every other week or so. But like I said, that pimple will last one night and then the hyperpigmentation will be gone in like one or two days. So I really want to credit that to this. Plus, the other thing that I really want to credit to this is it smells like like freaking brown sugar. It smells like warm brown sugar or caramel. And you guys know I'm back on keto and it's not something that I can have. So again, if I can have it, at least the scent on my face, I'll be happy. I'm, I'm willing to put up with it for that. Now, moving away from the kind of like treatment things, these are like weird side treatments. I don't really know where to put them because I feel like they're hydrators, but they're also treatments, um, are the snail mucuses that I've been really using. I know it sounds really, really gross and really, really weird, but <clears throat> I have been really, really enjoying um, snail mucuses. Uh, so this is the Advanced 96 Snail Mucin um, Power Essence by CosRx. This is thick. 
This is viscous, like when you put it on the back of your hands, you'll see like a little snail string that kind of goes up and down in there. It's really kind of gross and it almost feels like it's too much, but the snail secretion um, properties are so amazing. It's really, really healing for your skin. It's supposed to be soothing as well. Um, it's just a really great hydrator in addition to all of that. It's just fantastic for the skin and I've heard so many people that have had issues with acne um, or you know just any really skin irritations that are going down that this helps them big time. Now the advanced snail mucin one, this one is thick and this one is viscous but I kind of really like it. I, it's like really weird and really gross to use on your face but as you guys have seen with my most recent skincare thing I'll put it on and then I'll walk away. I like leave it on and let it sit for a while and then after like five or ten minutes like I'll go have a drink, I'll go brush my teeth, I'll play a video, a round of video games or something and then I'll put my moisturizer on top so that this gets a chance to sink in because I do really feel like this helps. Now for those of you guys out there who have like normal to oily skin and want some benefits that are not necessarily attached to something so heavy and so sticky. Um, the Snail Bee High Content Essence from Benton, this, okay, so I, I did repurchase this. This is on its way, it's coming. However, this one, I'm really thinking about repurchasing again too. Um, this one is, it's got B essence in there. I guess it's like a bee venom and I was like, bee venom? Oh, I'm putting that on my face. I want, I'll take some bee venom on my face. And apparently bee venom is supposed to be firming for your skin and really helps with anti-aging. So you have the healing treatment from the snail mucin and then you have the more like anti-aging from the bee venom. And I just, I just like the thought of putting venom in my face. I like putting a lot of things on my face now that I think about it. Oh, but anyway. So this thing is more gel textured. It's not as sticky, viscous. You don't get the little little uh, lines in there. You can smooth this onto your skin and it absorbs really, really well. Um, I might, now, now that I'm talking about it, I'm like, oh, I should have gotten a bottle of this too. This is really affordable. Um, so definitely check this one out, especially if you want um, especially if you want the benefits of snail mucin but don't want something so heavy. I feel like this absorbs really, really well and probably <laughs> I'm going to be purchasing this one again. I can tell you that for a fact. No, this year's moisturizer category is actually filled with a whole bunch of wins. The only item that I would consider to be a loss would probably not be a loss for somebody who wasn't using as many skin products as I currently am. So let's go ahead and jump into that one real quick. We've got the Belief Peak Miracle Revital Cream. Now this one, damn it Belief, you got me belief and in you. Your marketing team got me real good. This is supposed to improve skin turnover for a youthful smooth complexion. And they tell you this story about a rare blend of 80 different herbs deposited over millennia in uncontaminated glacial ponds of the northern European tundras. You know that's a nice story, but when you put miracle in the name of your cream, I'm expecting a little bit of a miracle. And the thing is, this was not a cheap cream. I believe it's like 60-ish dollars. And for me, as compared to some of their other moisturizers, I was like, ooh, okay, this is the expensive one. Let's put some money down because I want to be miraculously revitalized. That's what's in the name of your cream. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to be a youthful little baby's bottom. And it just, it didn't. The thing about it is that I do have to say, and this is going to be the saving grace. This is why I'm saying that this is a product that's a loss for me, but maybe not a loss for somebody else. Is because of the fact that it does have a lot of great ingredients in there. I think that for somebody with a much more simple skincare routine, this could be like their multi-use product. As you guys already saw, I'm using, you know, retinols. I have things that have lactic acid in them. There's a lot of skin cell turnover that's already happening. So this probably couldn't add much more into the mix. However, I think for somebody with normal to dry skin, because this thing is very creamy, it's very, very creamy, it's very rich, it's very nice for this, it feels well. Um, and the fact that it's really thick, actually, you know what? If you call this the Pete Thick Cream, I'd have believed you. I'd have been like, yes, belief. You got all my trust. You got all my love because this is a thick cream and this will last you a good while. 
But for anybody who has a more simple skincare routine, who maybe just uses like one serum and just wants to put a moisturizer uh, or an eye cream over that too, this, this I think will do you really, really well. But the fact that I was using so many other products in addition to this, I just don't think this this really got any space to shine. Um, because to be honest with you, I do think that they the Belief in general is a really, really great brand. Um, but just specifically for me, this wasn't necessarily the greatest, especially at the price. I do not believe in this one. However, what I do have a lot of belief in is their True Cream Moisturizing Balm. And this is why this is why I had belief in you. This is why I allowed you to fool me with the Pete Revital Miracle Cream, whatever you want to call it, promising me all of the hopes and dreams in the world, because this is fucking amazing. They called this the True Cream Moisturizing Balm, and that is the truth. Belief in that, because legitimately, you put this on your face, and the second that you put it on, you just feel refreshed. You feel like like literally a moisturizing balm has gone off all over your face and it feels amazing. Like you guys saw in one of my recent vlogs, this is one of the things that I picked up before TennoCon when my skin was really um, flaky and dry and had really, really bad texture. I used this and this thing turned it all around. I was like, oh, this is a savior cream. So when they said it's a moisturizing balm, I'm like, I'm gonna believe you. When you tell me that's a miracle cream, I'm gonna believe you. This, this is, this is really where my my like heart is. It has a really good smell too. I have all of the belief creams do. It smells like the way that I like to describe it is like fruity pebbles or fruit loops in milk because it has that creamy kind of like fruity sweet scent. I absolutely love this. I cannot, I cannot like recommend this enough. There's also an aqua bomb. So keep in mind the one I'm using is the moisturizing bomb. The aqua bomb is a slightly thinner gel texture, really, really good for normal to oily skin. So it's kind of like that, you know, that like, it's not as thick and viscous. This, you know, I like it a little thick, you know, you should have called the other one the thick cream and I would have been happy. But this one, oh, this feels really, really, really good. Now, speaking of thinner, kind of like gel-like creams, the other brand that I really fell in love with when it came to moisturizers is the Innisfree Jeju Orchid um, Enriched Lime. So this is the original Enriched Cream, and this is very, very similar to the Aqua Bomb in texture. It's lighter, it's, um, really refreshing on the face. Do I feel like it's as refreshing as the Belief one? No, but I really feel like this does the job. It's a little bit more affordable. Um, this one, the, the standard cream is not something that I would pick up again, but again, I would recommend it for normal to oily skin because it is very moisturizing, but it's not moisturizing enough for me. So that's that's the key, but you know what is moisturizing enough for me that uh, has been repurchased is the Innisfree Jeju Orchid Intense Cream. Now this one, the way that I would like position this is it's in between the thickness of the Believe True Cream Moisturizing Balm and the Thick Cream, the, the, the True Believe Peak Miracle Thick Cream. That's the one. So it's kind of like in between that. The one thing that I will say about this one is if you like glass skin and you like your skin to be really shiny and really dewy and really reflective, this is going to be for you. If you don't kind of want to look like fried chicken and greasy oil, this might not be for you so much. Now, as you guys know, I absolutely love the hyper moisturized, hyper shiny glass skin thing. So I'm all about this. I'm all about this one. It's great for me. Great under makeup, especially if you want like a dewy radiance. Um, but for the people who are a little bit more sensitive, I would stay, stay away from this if you are oily because you will not only look like you're oily, but you will also look like you're going to be dripping with oil in a couple hours. But for those of you guys who are super dry, crazy, ridiculously dry, this is definitely one that I would recommend. Um, again, like I said, I've repurchased. This is probably going to be um, my winter like moisturizer and in the summer I'm gonna end up going back to the True Cream Moisturizing Balm because th it's like the textures are just so, like the one's just slightly less thick and then this one's like greasy thick, you know? So it's like, 
it's, it's like the perfect, the meshing of the two. I love that. All right, so this next category may seem a little weird to you guys. I'm not sure if this counts as anything, but I call these supplemental moisturizers. Now, like I was saying earlier, I'm old, so I'm drying up like the Sahara, and I need as much moisture as possible. That's why I don't mind walking around looking like a greasy fried chicken. I'm all about that life. But sometimes you need a little extra moisturizer, whether it's, let's say, an SPF that dries you out, or if you're like me, and you need to get up first thing in the morning and you don't have time to wash your face and do the whole thing before you wash the dog, I tend to go ahead and add in a supplemental moisturizer and then I'll put SPF on the top of that. So I get a little moisturization boost, get a little bit of SPF, but the SPF doesn't have all the time to dry me out. So the two that I have finished, one is the oil-free moisturizing lotion with birch sap from CosRx. Okay. This is good. This shit is a good supplemental moisturizer. Remember like I was saying the Aqua Balm has that really refreshing feeling when you put it on your face? This is very similar, but it doesn't have nearly as much moisture. Now the reason I'm okay with that is because a lot of my supplemental moisturizers are just, you know, for the meanwhile, until I can get to going ahead and doing my whole crazy skincare routine. So just having something that provides some temporary moisture, something that is nice and cooling and calming to the skin, I think this one is absolutely fantastic. It's very affordable and the birch sap, just fantastic and very, very um, soothing and calming to the skin, which I'm a big fan of. The other thing that I've slowly but surely become obsessed with, not necessarily this product, but it's another one from The Ordinary. This is the 100% cold pressed marula oil. Marula oil was really, really big in skincare and even in hair care this year. So, uh, you know, and let's, let's be real, Drunk Elephant had a really, really expensive marula oil. I was like, all right, let's, let's try the um, Ordinary version because I find that The Ordinary really quite comparable. Um, I liked it, it was a great like supplemental moisturizer. However, when I looked up the like, I guess you would say the benefits of the Marilla oil, I found that there were other oils that I think could work a little bit better for my skin. So I actually purchased a couple different ones. My favorite one right now is called the Bee Oil, also by The Ordinary. It's a blend of oils. It's kind of green and it kind of smells like you are rubbing, um, what is it called? What is that, a wheatgrass shot on your face? which I'm kind of okay with because I like wheatgrass shots and I think that those are filled with good things. So I'm giving that a little bit of a thumbs up for now. And then I also have a borage seed oil that I've been using which makes my face smell like boiled chicken. So now I have a moisturizer that makes me look like I'm greasy, like fried chicken. And I have literally a skin oil that makes me smell like boiled chicken. It's just the, it's just the chicken skincare episode, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up with one final category, which I'm gonna refer to as finishing products. So we've got some SPFs in there, some facial mists, and even some lip care. Let's go ahead and kick things off with the CosRx Aloe Soothing Sun Cream. It's SPF PA Triple Plus. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you do not wear makeup, this is a great SPF. It smells really good. It's nice and hydrating to the skin. It gives you a nice dupe without making you look crazy greasy. Um, really, really enjoy this. However, I did have some issues with makeup pilling underneath this. And I tried a bunch of different serums. I was wondering if it was some sort of interaction between this product and other products that I was using because as you guys know, I use a lot of products on my face and legitimately when I put this on and then I would put makeup on top of it, it would pill and get kind of weird. However, if you're not wearing makeup, um, this is a fantastic, fantastic product. The smell of this is great as well. Now, this next product is gonna be the only product that I have not finished. Um, however, I will not be finishing this and I need to kind of put a disclaimer out to some people there. This is Innisfree and as you guys know, I've been loving the Innisfree moisturizer so I picked up the Perfect UV Protection Cream. This is the Triple Care so it's moisturizing and all that good stuff. This is um, SPF 50 PA Quadruple Plus. So there's a lot there's a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, sun resistance in there. It's also water resistant, which is very, very nice. However, when you go ahead and squeeze this out, it's a beigey color. And you're like, oh, damn, because every single you know SPF that's out there is like that white color and it can leave a white cast. 
So you like squeeze this out of the tube and you're like, oh, that's a beigey. It's a beigey tone. So when you look at it, you're like, oh my God, that's like almost a skin tone. Wait, it, it looks white on the screen, but it's got some skin tone color to it. Believe you me. It's very fair. But as you rub it into the skin, um, it doesn't necessarily leave a white cast. It leaves a purple cast. I don't know if it translates so well to the rest of you guys out there, but I have never had a, a like an SPF go purpley on me. Now, don't get me wrong, like a little white cast, fine, it's no big deal, I'll deal with it. But I literally put this on one morning, and when I walked out, I was like, I look purple. I like, listen, if you want to look like a unicorn, definitely go ahead and pick this one up. It's fantastic. It's got a lot of sun protection and you know, unicorns need sun protection. Um, but legitimately that's the only thing that I could think of for this is I was like, wow, it's got a weird purpley sheen. I've never experienced that in anybody with a darker skin tone. I'm sure the purple will come out even stronger. So I'm going to have to just chuck that actually, actually bought that for a friend. And um, I came over and I realized he hadn't used it, so I decided that I would try it out. And now I'm glad he didn't use it because that would be terrible on me. So uh, let's move on to Skin Mists. Now this one right here is the Pixie Glow Mist. This one so many people were like ranting and raving about. And if I'm gonna be honest with you, the ingredients with this thing, I was like reading through the ingredients list and I was really, really shocked because I believe Pixie is an American brand and if I'm just going to be realistic with you, I don't trust American brands to do very well with skincare. Like, I look at a lot of their ingredients and I'm like, eh, I guess. Um, in fact, I've looked at some of the skin mists that are currently being advertised out there right now, and I've been looking at their ingredients list. I've been looking at how much those main particular things in their ingredients list cost, and I'm like, wow, you are insanely overcharging for something that you could literally make for maybe five, six dollars. Uh, but regardless, this was the Pixie Glow Mist and I was really impressed by the, um, the formula that was in here or the ingredients that were in here. However, the one thing I was not impressed about was the spray. The spray was like, it, initially it has this nice mist, but the back end it has a couple of and I'm like, there's an issue, okay? Because the Pixie Glow Mist, is really, really glowy. It has oils in there. It's got argan oil and some other things. Um, so that leaves a nice sheen to the face. But when you get splatted on at the very, very end, because you get the initial nice mist, and it goes, it's like, it's like, and that's exactly how it goes. So it's like the initial mist is beautiful, and then you get spritzes. And you're like, I have several oil blobs on my face. And the thing is, when I put on a skin mist, I want to mist it on my face and not touch my face. Otherwise, I would have just put on a face product. <laughs> but literally, this one, very, very nice. Scent was really, really great. The ingredients are fantastic. The only thing that I did not like was the spritzer. And I think that it's not just the spritzer, but I think it's the way that the formula worked because I actually tried to create a similar formula in a different spritzer that has a better spritzer, but that one also spitooled at the same time. So I think it's the combination of the oil and the um, liquids that are in here where you shake it up and you spray it out that kind of leads a little bit to the splatteriness. So if you guys want, I would actually like use this as maybe a hydrating toner instead of a mist because again, I feel like I need to pat it in. Now, if you're okay with patting it in, totally fine. Go ahead and do that. Like wash your hands, pat it into your face. Um, but like if you're doing this over makeup and you get little oily spittles, it's not the greatest. Like I hope that your makeup can like hold on, like hold up to itself without getting like completely broken down by big oil spittles. Um, now, the one that I did say has a beautiful crazy mist, another Innisfree product. I'm loving Innisfree. This is the Olive Oil Real Oil Mist EX. I don't know what the EX is there for, but number one, it smells fantastic. It also has that, like that bi-phase kind of thing where you gotta shake it up and you spray it on your face, but the, the, the mist on it is so fine and it's so beautiful and it's so wonderful and I loved it. This is definitely gonna be, I don't, 
I'm not, I haven't really been in a face mist mood as of late because I've been using a lot of skin oils that tend to do a lot of hydrating. Um, so this on its own, man, I, I would, if you're into a skin mist, I would say pick this up. But if you're not really in the mood for a skin mist, then you know, this, this can go away. But scent is great. Really, really fine mist, and like I said, I actually tried to create, you know, a kind of like hydrating toner with a little bit of oil on top, shake it up and spray it through this. It doesn't spray as nicely with this, so I think that the formulation is perfectly formulated for the sprayer that it's in. So lots of credits for that one. Now, the last few things that we're gonna talk about are odd beauty things, I guess I would say. One of them is an eye product, and I'm actually using it right now. It's uh, Lumified. Now, this bottle is actually full. Um, I bought a smaller bottle of this um, to try it out. Well, it's not a smaller bottle. It's the same size bottle, but they don't fill it up all the way. It's weird. Um, it's really expensive. Like, this bottle right here is like 20 bucks. This is $20. Um, however, for those of you guys who are contact wearers out there, it gets your eyes really, really clear. Um, you guys know in some of my other videos, I have like a lot of issues with just me getting uh, red veins in my eyes. It's just a thing that happens. Um, even when I'm not wearing contacts, I'll still have them there. So maybe it's probably like staring into a screen for a lot of my day editing or playing video games or whatever it is that I'm doing, like streaming and all that kind of stuff that causes like eye irritation. But this does a great job at getting rid of it and it doesn't have that weird like cooling sensation that a lot of uh, places like to say. It's like it's cooling. I'm like it's stinging. It's burning. I like go blind for about 10 seconds and I hope to God that it goes away. This doesn't do that. This is just really great at clearing things up. Um, now the last bit that I want to show off is probably going to be really boring to you um, and it is actually technically a repurchase. Oh, this is a repurchase for sure. I'm, I'm, even though it's like fucking $20 for this little bottle of Lumify, it's a repurchase for sure. Um, now this one is the Burt's Bees Tinted Lip Balm, specifically in the color Zinnia. Um, and this is actually ridiculously sheer. It's just got this light tint of coral in it. And again, like I said, this is a repurchase, so it's full. And the reason that it's a repurchase, I can't even say it was originally an empty, because uh, I got like double teamed by the cats and dogs. What ended up happening is uh, uh, the cat knocked off the lip balm from the counter sometime in the middle of the night, I don't know when, and then the next morning I wake up to find the dog chewing on uh, the case of this. And I was like, well, that's not good. So I actually went ahead and used this one. This is Pink Blossom. So again, this is very sheer. I know it sounds crazy. I'm like, you're putting this crazy pink stuff on your lips. It's very, very sheer. Um, but I like using this to give my lips some color so I don't look dead. <laughs> and it's very natural. It's a very nice chapstick from uh, Burt's Bees. So it's kind of like got a little tint. It's got the Burt's Bees moisturizing thing going on. Um, but the pink is a little too pink on me. And this one's a little bit closer to my natural skin color and my natural lip color. So I, I used this a couple times and I was like, ah, that color is not the most flattering. This is probably good for somebody whose lips are naturally a little bit pinker and cooler. Mine are a little bit warmer. So uh, the Zinnia is absolutely perfect. Okay, so I don't know why I cut it off there because there was one more item that I wanted to talk about, which is the Jack Black lip balm. And I really need some cheering on for this because I've never finished a lip balm in my life, but look, I am so darn close to finishing this thing. I don't know about the rest of you guys, and leave this in the comments below. Have you ever completely finished a lip balm? I own like five of these, okay? And I kind of like keep one at the desk, I keep one in the car, I keep one in my jacket. Like I love having the Jack Black lip balms, they're really, really good. Um, but I noticed that I was finishing this one, and I was like, I need, I need, I need to finish one lip balm in my life and it is so stinking close that I'm like, I must dedicate myself to this. So when I'm not using something tinted and when I just wanna really deeply hydrate my lips, I use this a lot at night um, so that when I wake up, my lips are all soft and stuff. This is fantastic and just, just, I'm so close. I'm counting this one as an empty too. So uh, that about does it for my beauty skincare empties. I hope you guys enjoyed that and got a little bit of perspective as to what my skin is really liking and what your skin might really like as well. Hopefully you guys get a chance to try some of these out. Let me know if you've had any personal experiences with them, what you think is great, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, or anything that you think that I should go ahead and try out.
out. Um, also, let me know if you like this style of video, and that about does it for me for now. So, as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. Happy New Year's, you guys. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.